The origins of Greystone trace back to 1865, when John Waring, a titan of industry known for owning the world's largest hat factory, commissioned architect John Davis Hatch to construct a 99-room mansion on 33 acres in Yonkers. Named for the gray granite quarried nearby, Greystone was a fortress-like Hudson River Valley villa that epitomized the grandeur of its era. However, the financial crisis of 1876 forced Waring to relinquish his creation, setting the stage for Greystone's next chapter. In 1879, Samuel J. Tilden, a former governor of New York and a presidential hopeful, saw potential in Greystone not just as a summer residence, but as a horticultural campus. Tilden's tenure at Greystone was marked by the construction of 13 greenhouses, laying the groundwork for the estate's transformation into a botanical paradise. His death in 1886 left a void, but also a vision that would inspire the estate's next steward. Enter Samuel Untermeyer in 1899, a legal luminary with a passion for public welfare and a zeal for horticulture unmatched by his contemporaries. Untermeyer's acquisition of Greystone was not merely an investment, it was a commitment to creating a sanctuary of beauty and a beacon of educational advocacy. The crowning glory of Untermeyer's tenure was the commissioning of William Wells Bosworth in 1916 to design what was called the finest garden in the world. Bosworth's creation, a fusion of Persian and Greek styles, was a horticultural masterpiece that included the Greek garden, the vista with its breathtaking Hudson River views, and an Italian-style vegetable garden. Untermeyer's gardens were not just a private pleasure, but a spectacle, generously open to the public to inspire and educate. Untermeyer enlisted architect Joseph H. Freelander to renovate the mansion, making it a worthy vessel for his art collection in a home that reflected his status as one of the era's most formidable lawyers. To enter the mansion, we will first climb the steps towards the front door hidden in the shadows of the veranda's large, overhanging eaves. This leads us into the vestibule, clad in stone with a pointed ceiling soaring overhead. Opening the wrought iron doors will bring us to the entrance hall. As we make our way above herringbone wood floors, sun pours in through the oculus overhead. Directly in front of us, the grand staircase sweeps against stained glass windows at its landing. First, we will wander into the dining room, where a gilded, coffered ceiling glistens above a grand fireplace boasting intricate relief work. Originally, the library had been designed to be more simplistic, but refined in its own right. When Untermeyer renovated it, he elevated the space to the height of Victorian fashion with freestanding bookcases, fretwork placed in front of the windows, and an incredibly unique, polished bronze chandelier with porcelain and fabric worked into its design. The mansion continued on and on, with many more lavish rooms, boasting antique European tapestries in Untermeyer's extensive art collection. However, these photos are all that remain. Despite Untermeyer's attempts to bequeath the entire estate for public enjoyment, only 16 acres were initially accepted by the city of Yonkers in 1946, forming the nucleus of what is now Untermeyer Park and Gardens. The subsequent decades saw periods of neglect and revival, with the 1970s restoration under Mayor Angelo Martinelli and the more recent efforts led by community leaders in the Open Space Institute ensuring that Untermeyer's vision endures. Samuel Untermeyer's impact extended far beyond the gates of Greystone. As a lawyer, he championed the regulation of stock exchanges and was a pivotal figure in the establishment of the Federal Reserve. His advocacy for legal reforms and his role in landmark cases underscored his commitment to justice and economic equity. Unfortunately, his mansion did not escape the wrecking ball, but if you were ever fortunate enough to visit, you will find ruins of the once great estate dotting the landscape. Which part of Greystone was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.